All right, guys, Tactical Be here back again today. Hope you're all enjoying your Wednesday. Today, I want to talk about a number of things. First of all, the main thing, at least, the meta right now in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Not a topic I go into super often here, but over the last couple of days, last few weeks, really, I've seen more and more people using the MP7. So I wanted to go through some of the MP7 classes that are deemed to be really, really good right now, especially a clip from uh, Simp that came out yesterday, and also some of the other classes right now that are mainly used in competitive play, and kind of the stuff that you guys could be using if you're still playing uh, Modern Warfare, at least for public matches, game battles and stuff like that, rather than Warzone. I think the classes there are a little bit different. Haven't played enough of it to tell you what's really good over on that neck of the woods. But want to talk about competitive classes more, uh, more mainly today. Not something I normally talk about, but just to get you guys in the right ballpark if you're still playing Modern Warfare, as a lot of people are. Like, if you guys enjoy, subscribe if you're new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, just to follow up from yesterday, Clayster says, I will speak from our squad and say we have no idea what's going on. This is regarding Call of Duty going to this online league. Who knows? Clay says he's just in the dark. I'm sure our team owner, that being Hastro, has been in discussions, but we haven't been told anything final yet. So firstly, let's have a look at this clip from uh, Simp here. Just wanted to play this on screen for you guys real quick because uh it, it's quite the achievement we control the hard point. So Simp with the MP7 in hand, absolutely frying people all over the map. What's interesting about this MP7 meta I wanted to talk about, which potentially could come into play, right now we don't have an MP7 meta. Most maps we tend to see four MP5s really and one, um, one M4. That tends to be the meta. Insertion Destroy Destroyer is a little bit different. You can see more often um, M4s coming into play on the map, but pretty much it's just MP5s and M4s. And I said like a long time ago at the start of the year really that I thought that what we would get into as we kind of have is a one SMG, one AR meta because you have the situation where, um, you know, all the attachments being in the game, if you're the best SMG and you're the best AR overall, you can put all the attachments on your gun to make it so that it's just the best gun in any range. Like you can change up your M4 to suit any ranged gunfights you want to go to and it's still pretty much going to be the best gun at that range. The MP5 was in a similar boat to be honest. Interesting really because right at the start of the game, the MP7 was considered most popular by like all the, um, by all the professionals they were like all using the mp7 right at the start of the game but then the meta kind of quickly shifted to the mp5 i always thought the mp5 was better to be honest when i first played the game but the m the you know the mp7 actually really does have some good things going for it given it as like the 40 round mag and all of this stuff which you don't get with the mp with the mp5 so um yeah there's definitely some benefits to the mp7 and you'll see some uh some cracking classes here so this is the class that simp comes out with so this is what i wanted to look at Quite interesting to see this change potentially being made. On some maps like Azir Cave, you do tend to see like four ARs and one MP5 tends to come out. But as the year goes on, the game always tends to be played at a faster and faster pace. And maybe now people are thinking, well, the texture bullets in the MP5 or in the MP7 actually, um, you know, the guns are easy to confuse, actually makes a really, really big difference. So this is the class that, uh, that Simp is going for right here. No stock is pretty much a staple on most weapons in the game right now. You tend to see no stock being used most of the time. FSS barrel or SSS recon here for the barrel, Merc foregrip, which is very common on the SMGs, stippled grip tape and sleight of hand. This is like a standard respawn kind of MP7 meta type class. We'll see a similar thing here for the MP5 when we look at that in a second. Is this reasonable or this might come into the competitive play then? Because at the start of the year, it wasn't used. We have seen kind of recently in a game like CS where a change is made to the meta. So for example, you guys might remember the Org and the Krieg meta that's going on right now in CS. They changed the price just slightly of the Org. And people realized, damn, this gun is good just because they made it slightly cheaper. 
But when they put the price back up again, people were still using it way more. So the case isn't the same here, but it's definitely possible, as was the case in CS for a long time with this Krieg or the SG a lot of people are using right now, that a gun has actually been the best in the game for several years in CS's case, and several months potentially in Call of Duty's case, but it hasn't really been used because it's just been the meta for everyone to use the MP5. And now the MP7 once again is asserting dominance. It's interesting how that meta shift works. Start of the year, everyone thinks the MP7's better. And then, you know, a month into the game, everyone thinks, ah, oh, you know, it's the MP5. Maybe they look at the stats a little bit more in depth. They see the MP5 as a nice three-shot kill range. The headshots on it are dominant. It kills at five bullets all the way across the map. These kind of things that the MP7 doesn't do, and then everyone uses the MP5 and thinks it's god tier, which it definitely is a great weapon. However, maybe people, you know, looked away from the MP7, and I can't say I've used it, because that's all the pros have been using, right, MP5s. I haven't really been trialing with the MP7, but this weekend, Cast did this tournament for the um, our competitive Reddit. Dis they had, uh, like, a Discord tournament kind of thing that went on, on on the whole of the subreddit. Pretty good going, and one of the players on the winning team there, he was rocking the MP7 all weekend and dominating with it. I was like, well, what's going on there? How's he pulling this off? And then Tim comes out just a couple of days later with this clip so you know this could be a class to consider i'm definitely going to try it out uh if, if sim is putting up numbers like that then i'm definitely going to give it a go unfortunately i don't have quite uh, sim's talent on the sticks wish i did but um that's a story for another day so these are some classes i just stole from uh, an elgato because um well i didn't steal it from anyone really these are the classes that i'm using right now so this is the mp5 class these are search and destroy based for respawn you want to do something a little bit different Mostly here you want to change it your compensator for sleight of hands if you are playing in respawns But this is typically a class you want to go for in terms of a five um, Five attachment setup. This is kind of the go-to right now I think in terms of SMGs Merc 4 grip 10 millimeter ammunition stippled grip tape compensator f tac collapsible um, Pretty go-to I think maybe no stock is also appropriate here But definitely depends on the weapon, but this mp5 is very very good indeed this is the overall class just for you guys to check out. So this is what I'm using right now. I have specialist on because of course perks um, or kill streaks you can't use them anyway. They're banned at a competitive play, so no point having them on. So EOD ghost. There is really no good perk to to use. It's actually better to have um, ghost than point man because point man makes it even more costly to get your specialist streaks most of the time so it tends to be better i think to use ghost rather than point man but i have been playing around with it a little bit tune ups definitely kind of the go-to here at least in search and destroy you can go battle hardened which is kind of protects you from stunts and stuff but tune up gets your um dead silence way quicker so in search and destroy tune ups definitely the way to go and then in terms of specialist, I always go double time as the first or EOD as the first if you are going to use. You can use EOD or double time here. That's perfectly fine, depending on what class you want to run. But yeah, double time is kind of the first the first one after that. Cold-blooded then goes after that. If you're playing respawn, you might want to put scavenger a bit higher because you can actually run kind of low on ammunition sometimes. Um, but, you know, then again in respawn, you're always running over people's bodies anyway to pick up their ammunition. Probably not such a big deal. Semtex versus um, frag grenades is an interesting one. In certain and destroy typically frag grenades can be better because you can bank them off corners and stuff however in this game i kind of do prefer semtexes they blow up quicker there is certain spots where sticking them to things and being able to chuck them in roofs and stuff does make it a lot better and you know not having to cook the frag grenade does create some benefits however there are some spots where the frag grenade is needed for example if you're on piccadilly you're coming out of um offense spawn you want to nade over towards where the jeep is behind um those two the line of buses basically if you want to need that, you kind of need a frag grenade. So, depends on the situation. It also depends. Um, I have a Corvus, an M4 class right here. So, this is that. But just to talk really quickly, on this class, I have an alternative here with um, with a frag grenade. Because on um, it's Gunrunner on the offensive side of that, there's a frag grenade you can throw over the mid like office building to get someone who goes to tracks to try and watch the A cross. You need a frag grenade to do that. And quite often, I'll throw it because it can throw them off. And you can maybe get through to A and sneak and do some plays like that. So, this is the M4 class I typically rock. This is pretty much the go-to right now. Compensator and Commando foregrip combine really, really well to dull down the recoil. Commando foregrip gives you a little bit of side-to-side -side kick, but it completely narrows down the um, the vertical one. You can use, I think it's the Operator foregrip here as well, which does also have good impacts, um, but it mainly narrows down the vertical kick and gives you the, uh, narrows down the horizontal kick, gives you the vertical kick. So you can kind of go either way. People tend to be going towards the Commando, but either of those I think is a decent option. The Corvus Custom is kind of a really, really good barrel to go for here because 
It's somewhat in between what you normally get and the um, the M16 Grenadier barrel, which we'll have a look at in a second. So this is kind of a go-to. Um, you can use this in pretty much any situation. This is pretty much the class I use most of the time. Stippled grip tape you can use if we're not using an optic. And then no stock as well, pretty much what everyone's using right now. This is another alternative as well, which I have in terms of M4s. So this is the stock M16 Grenadier. And then I put a, um, I forget exactly the name of this. It's basically the very first optic you come to. You guys can also choose whichever you prefer. I think it's like the L9 Cronin optic or something like that. Um, so that's what I tend to use here. This is for longer range fights. If you're playing on a map like Arklov Peak, maybe on a um, Piccadilly or something, you're going top A building, you want to be able to map people, probably better to have an optic and then to have the Grenadier Barrel because it tends to be longer range, even though it gives you some downsides in terms of ADS time and stuff like that. But still, even in this situation, no stock is the way to go because it gives you much more mobility for what it costs compared to using the, um, the M16 stock, for example. So yeah, those are the classes I'm pretty much using right now. And um, yeah, the MP7 could well come into the meta, but I wanted to give you guys kind of an overview of what you can be using especially in search and destroy and definitely some options for different locations as i say the decision between semtex and um you know the frag grenade depends in respawn definitely semtex is the way to go and of course, you've got to consider if you're playing respawn, like high tier competitive, the gentleman's agreements and stuff like that. You're only allowed two smokes, you're only allowed two stuns and a flashbang, whatever. If you're going to play a proper team game like that, at least in terms of what the professionals are using. However, it really depends here. In search and destroy, I tend to use smoke grenades. However, there is some stuns you can use for rushes and it can help you significantly in gunfights as well. But you've also got to consider the fact that you can now edit classes mid game. I don't even have a battle hardened class on, but if the entire enemy team is running stuns, I can just change my classes mid map and, um, you know, counter that, right? And, you know, you can, other teams can do similar things. So I tend to go with smoked. It tends to be better. Bait out bomb plants and bait out enemies and stuff like that. First search and destroy, at least, which is what I play the most of. But in respawn, it can differ a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you definitely want mobility in this game. It's really great to have. Tune up for the dead silence quickly. Many other options available. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new. As always, I would greatly appreciate it. Leave your thoughts down below. I've got a few things um, planned for upcoming days because it's kind of difficult right now to find content, as I'm sure you're aware, because there's not too much going on. Hopefully we get some announcements regarding the CDL very, very shortly indeed, and then I'll be able to talk through that. But until then, I'm going to pretty much have some filler content. I want to talk about some of the teams, some of the options they have going forwards. And uh, if you have any thoughts on a potential content I could look into, please leave it down in the comment section below. I'd be really intrigued to hear it. And um, yeah, I always appreciate ideas and opportunities that may arise. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new as always. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.